Thank you for tuning into Literary Blend, a publishing podcast. I'm your host, Demi Michelle Schwartz. There's no perfect recipe for chasing a dream in the publishing industry, but I hope the conversations on this show give you the ingredients you need to bake yours into reality. So let's flip the page and get into this chapter of Literary Blend. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Literary Blend. Today's chapter is called Landing Podcast Interviews as an Author. And joining me on the show to cover this topic is Michelle Glogovac. Hi, Michelle. Hi, how are you? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm so good. I'm excited to be here with you. Yeah, I'm so excited you're here as well. And we are going to have a fabulous conversation. But before we get into that, I would love for you to share with the listeners a little about yourself. Thank you. I am Michelle Glogovac, the podcast matchmaker, author of How to Get On Podcasts, host of the My Simplified Life podcast, and the CEO and founder of the MLG Collective, a podcast PR agency where we work with authors, entrepreneurs, change makers, thought leaders who want to elevate themselves and their brands by utilizing podcast interviews. Fabulous. You are a superstar, and I'm so excited to pick your brain on all the things. So let's get right into it. So first in general, why do you feel it is important for authors to seek out podcast interview opportunities? I feel that authors are celebrities to me. I am a huge book lover. I have been since I was a child. My prized possessions are all of my autographed books. And so I feel like getting to know an author and the person that's behind these words are first and foremost a beautiful thing that podcasts allow us to do because we don't get to know an author on that personal level and to hear their own words, to get to know them. You know, we read these books that are beautiful and that teach us something that transport us to another place. But to get to know the author and their journey, it's something completely different. And so for the reader, it's very beneficial to get to hear the author speak and share themselves, where for the author, it's great to have that connection with those people that either already read your books or they're going to go, oh, I want to get to know more, or I've fallen in love with this author. Let me go find the books and read those as well and become readers and fans. And, and so the connection between the two are just a really great thing that help an author not just sell books, but build their author brand as well. Absolutely. All fantastic information. I'm also involved in the music industry. I'm a songwriter and recording artist. And from the same perspective, I do a ton of interviews as a songwriter. And just growing up, it's so interesting for me to listen to interviews by authors and musicians and people that I look up to and not only hear the story behind their works, but also their journeys and their processes. I've learned so much about the crafts and the business just from hearing others' experiences. And so it's very beneficial. And for the author specifically, I think that it's a great way to make your name more known. It's very difficult, especially like as a debut or just getting started for readers to know you and publishing professionals to know you. But once you start to get podcast interviews and other interviews, you can start to make a name for yourself and you'll also be able to build up your press kit and show that you are putting the work in to market your book. I think nowadays it's really important for authors and other creators to market their work and not solely rely on publishing houses because this is something you created and so you should want to share it you should want to talk about it and after spending so much time on creating a book going through the whole publication process podcasts are a great way for you to share all about your story and your journey and much more Absolutely. And, you know, the publishing houses have so many other authors that they have to work with as well. And podcasts allow you as an author not to have to spend the money on flying around the country, you know, going to a book signing in the hopes of somebody showing up, you know, a handful of people showing up. A podcast has a built-in audience and they already trust that host. So that trust is extended to you. And the ripple effect becomes huge when you start sharing the episode, the host is sharing the episode, now the listeners are sharing the episode. So it just becomes bigger and bigger. And the potential is actually far greater than if you did an in-person book tour. 
Absolutely, yeah. Podcasts have such a reach, and you're exactly right. I mean, there's there's other ways to market uh, in store events, library visits, school visits. But I mean, podcasts. I am recording in my closet right now. <laughs> like, you don't even have to leave your house. You just need a good setup area that you can do your recording, and it will be all across the world on many different platforms and reach many listeners. So, speaking of this setup, um, what are your tips? for authors when they have these interviews what advice do you have for them to get certain equipment or a certain setup that will maximize the quality of their podcast recording definitely get an external mic something that plugs in and they can range from very inexpensive i gift every client of mine a toner usb it's around 30 dollars I use a Blue Yeti, so you can go up to $200, but you don't have to spend a ton of money for good quality. Get yourself some headphones because it's going to help the editor, (laughs) and you want to be the editor's best friend too. So get yourself a microphone, headphones. If there's video involved, I always say get a ring light because then it'll make you look even better. You don't have to, you know, cake on the makeup. Um, I have an external camera that has a built-in ring light. So, and that again is inexpensive on Amazon or just a ring light for like 25, 30 bucks. But those are the three basic things that you need. And then make sure that your laptop, your desktop is equipped with different browsers because some of the recording platforms, they don't take Google, they don't take um, Safari or Firefox. So you need to make sure that you have the most up-to-date browsers and you have a variety of them. Even if you don't use them, some of the platforms only take certain ones. So test out your equipment, test out um, different recording areas. I always say, you know, move around in a room, move to the closet, go in different places, record little snippets of yourself and see what sounds the best. And do all of this in advance of hitting, you know, join when you're doing an interview (laughs) because then it's too late, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. I have nothing to add. You hit it perfectly. But what I will say is the reason why we're stressing this so much is because you can only do so much with audio editing. And I don't do video because it can be a total nightmare just because I edit a lot. And if I'm chopping up a file so much, the videos could look all distorted. And so I just do audio recording. But that being said, I can do compression. I can do EQ and I do that on everybody's tracks. But if you give me crap audio, there's nothing. I mean, I can't make it perfect. (laughs) So just do your absolute best to give clean audio for sure. (laughs) Oh, man. So, all right. Now I want to chat about pitching to podcasts, which is huge. So if you stumble upon a podcast that features authors and you want to appear on that show, you're going to want to optimize your chances of landing a spot on the show by pitching yourself in the best way possible. So, Michelle, what are your tips when it comes to pitching podcasts? Uh, You want to start off with creating unique speaking topics for yourself. And by unique, I mean, do not go in saying I'm an author or I want to promote my new book. We all know that podcast interviews are essentially for you, the guest. So please do not say openly that you were there to promote yourself. You will get that opportunity at the end of every interview, but you need to go in with the entire thought process that you're going to share of yourself and your knowledge with the audience. So that's first and foremost, you know, what has your journey been like? Were, did you just pop out of high school and you became a published author? What did the publishing journey look like? What parts of yourself are inside your book? Let us get to know you, the person, and not simply the book. And once you've identified that this is a podcast I want to pitch myself to, listen to the podcast. Listen to some episodes and not the most recent one. Go back, find one that you really relate to. And when you reach out to the host, tell them that. Tell them the specific episode you listened to, why you found it useful to yourself, what did you get out of it, and really prove to them that this isn't a copy and paste. You're never going to copy and paste. You're going to really get personal and let them know that, yes, you've done your homework and you genuinely appreciate what they're doing. And then add in that this is what you're going to bring to the table. This is why they need to have you on because you're unlike anyone else they've interviewed. 
And what knowledge or journey are you going to share that those, their listeners can learn from? Then take from your topics, you should have created about six, take two or three that are most applicable and share those within the email. And then wrap it all up with some places that you've already been featured. Make sure you hyperlink everything. Make sure your name is clickable, that where you've been interviewed is clickable. You can include a Spotify playlist of your former interviews so that everything's in one place and the host does not have to go Google your name if they don't want to because they won't need to. I also recommend you attach your media kit or your one page, whatever you want to call it, that has your full bio. It has all of your speaking topics. It has uh, your website, your headshot, everything that somebody needs to see exactly who you are and make sure it looks like your website. So the branding is the same. The fonts are the same. The colors are the same. And again, it's a clickable document. So they can click on your name. They can click on cover art for podcasts to go right to your interview that kind of a thing. And then follow up in about two or three weeks because it's really important to remember that podcast hosts, for the most part, this is not our full-time job. We all have full-time jobs, other commitments, families, things like that. So we are not pining away like a journalist is with a 24-hour deadline to get a new guest. So be patient in your follow-up. Be kind. Don't save really critical information for your follow-up. I've received pitches where the pitch says something and the follow-up gives me their actual topics. And then the next follow-up gives me more information. Don't do that. Don't string me along. Give it all to me, that first email, and then send some follow-ups a couple to three weeks later and be gentle with them. Perfect. Again, fantastic information. I have, personally for me, I have for music, an EPK is what we pitch, which is an electronic press kit. That is literally on my website with a whole list of all my press, my bio, pictures, lyric video, everything. And I'm building up an author bio as well with all the information, but I'm so new in the author world. But it's so important when you're pitching yourself to have the information in one place, whether that's a page on your website or attaching it as a document, like a press release or a one page or something, because we do not have the time to go down rabbit holes to discover more about you. And the other thing too, it's so important to present yourself in a very professional way and a very clear and concise way, because I get, and I'm sure you do too, a ton of requests. I host this show and I host a music show. And the music one is has been around longer, so that one is a little more popular and I get more requests for that. And it's absolutely impossible for me to accept every single request that I get. And so when I'm sitting there looking at my calendar and going, okay, I need one person to fill this spot and I have three that I'm looking at, I guarantee you the one I'm going to pick is the one that starts the email hi to me. I can't tell you how many times no name or the wrong name and it's clear that they didn't listen to the show. I've had people pitch my music one asking if they can talk about their new single if I can review, review them and that show does not do reviews. It's a conversational based show and so it's you need to like you said to listen to the show and understand what the platform is because different shows are formatted differently and have different target audiences and so that's really important and just to present all the information in a very clear way be kind be professional don't follow up the next day I've had that happen to me and it's just going to be like a turn off like you couldn't have given me a day to look at this um, because <laughs> we get a lot of emails and like you said we're doing other things I do 50,000 things I don't get paid for this I do it out of passion and so just be patient as well and uh Again, too, it's recognizing that these opportunities are competitive, and so you're not going to land them all, and just keep trying, keep pitching yourself, and if you pitch one platform and you don't hear back or the host isn't available at that time, that definitely means that you can pitch them down the road, and so just keep going, stay persistent, and you will definitely get opportunities one way or another. And I'd also add to that, not to worry about how big the podcast is. You know, make sure you're looking at who the listening audience is and focus on that because it's much better to get on a podcast that has 200 listeners and every single one of those 200 listeners wants to hear from you and buy your book 
versus one that has a million listeners and nobody's really interested in your beach read. They're a bunch of mechanics or something or engineers. You know, make sure that you're looking at who the audience is and focus on that because sometimes smaller is better. Yeah, that's a very good point. And, you know, I definitely think that, again, this is an industry where relationships are absolutely essential. And so if you can build a relationship with a podcaster who is newer, they can definitely be a part of your network versus if you find a podcast that's massive and you have like one exchange with that host and you never talk to them ever again, then they're not going to be part of your network. And I think relationships are so, so important because you absolutely never know. You could be on a show that blows up the next day or, you know, I can interview an author that is just debuting and they go on to be a New York Times bestseller and then whenever their book, you know, comes out and they get tons and tons of readers, those readers will come to the show to listen to the episode, which will give me more listeners. And so it's just a win-win situation. Like I honestly, I've talked to authors that aren't even published yet. And I've talked to a New York Times bestseller. And both of those conversations are equally valid. Neither author is more important than the other just because of their status. I think that is really important to remember that we're all human beings doing what we love. We love books and we're in publishing. And so just recognizing that as well to focus on building genuine relationships, not necessarily always shooting for the biggest thing. Definitely. I love that. Perfect. So now let's chat more on what happens after the episode comes out. It has made me mind blown the amount of times that I have featured somebody on either show and they just don't do anything with the episode. And it's like, why wouldn't you want to promote something you're on? Does not make sense to me. Uh, So there are so many opportunities that you have for promoting something that you are on and using it for promotion for yourself and marketing. So what are your thoughts on what an author can do with an episode once it is released? I think part of the problem that people find is that they feel like it's a form of self-promotion. So we need to get rid of that mindset. This is not a form of self-promotion in sharing where you've been featured. This is a way to thank the host for extending their platform, for spending the time and the money on you to be on their show. So you have to promote the episode and don't simply do it in your Instagram stories for 24 hours so that a few people can see it and it goes away. That is lazy and it's not acceptable. You should do it, but you should be doing more. You should be creating posts and I create graphic templates in Canva for myself and clients, but sometimes the host will give you graphics. So you don't even have to do that some of the time, but use these and post within your feeds in Instagram, on Twitter, on threads, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, all of these places. Also, I love a Spotify playlist. So I create a playlist that has my own cover art. So it's me and it has, you know, description of who I am and what I do and that these are podcast interviews with me as the guest. And I add every single interview I do to that playlist. That playlist is embedded on my LinkedIn profile and also my website. And then I create blog posts for every episode that I've been on. Uh, I do that so that then I can embed the player, which you can also get on Spotify or you can ask for the ho- from the host. So nobody has to leave my website to listen to the interview, but the download still goes to the host. So it's still a win-win for everybody once again. Fabulous. Well, I think, again, this brings up a website and I think it's so important to have a website. You do not need to spend a ton of money on one. I have a web developer because my website at this point is super dynamic and I don't know how to do web development and I don't have the time to figure it out. So I have somebody, but you can do like a free one that's like pretty chill. But I think it's really important to have a website because everything that you're on you can have that all in one place. And that's just so beneficial for not only yourself to kind of build up your diary of sorts of like all the things you've been on, but whenever you are pitching yourself places or just sharing what you've done on social media, you can literally just direct people to your website and it's all in one place and you're not sending people to YouTube for this thing and Spotify for this thing and all over the place if you had a post on Instagram or whatever. If all the important things that you've done along with your bio and everything else is in one place on your website, it's just so much more easy to you know share it around and have everything in one place for yourself. 
Absolutely. You should buy your name domain. That's like first and foremost. Right, absolutely. Snatch that up as quickly as you can uh-huh. and create something simple on about, you know, with your bio, a contact page. Make sure you have a contact page. Yes. Oh my uh, goodness. <laughs> Some way that we can find you and reach out to you and connect with you because if it's just a page and there's no information, your Instagram doesn't have a contact button, then how are people supposed to connect with you? Right. Yeah. And the other thing too is it's just a mark of professionalism as well. Like every major business that we know of, they have websites. And as authors, we are the heads of our careers. We love books, but this is a business. And so by having a website, it's a mark of professionalism. And it's a way, again, contact. People have just reached out to me for, you know, offering me opportunities for things or reaching out for the show or anything like that. Like the reason why they're able to do that is because I have a contact page and for both of my shows, this one and the music one, there are specific emails for those shows on both of those pages on my website. And so if you're an author, like I could be scrolling through Twitter and this has happened seeing an author that I was like oh I would like to have them on my show and I could message them in direct messages but I try to avoid that because I don't think that's super professional but sometimes I have to do it but if I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see an author who has a new release and I'm like super excited for the book and I want to have them on the show don't make me try to like jump through hoops to find your contact information because if I can't find it and your DMs are closed, then I'm just going to move on. And so you never know who can be watching you as well to reach out to offer you an opportunity. Definitely. And that brings up another point in sharing your episodes. You never know who's watching, who wants to buy your book, who wants to offer you an opportunity, who wants to work with you. And they're simply waiting for that one post where you're sharing where you can be heard and that was what that was the nudge they needed to reach out connect with you so that's why it's so important to just get yourself out there and let everyone know that you are out there that you have a book that you're writing a book that you have services to offer so that way people can connect with you because you don't know who's stalking you on the back end you know and, and just waiting before they they connect Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. So just to wrap up this conversation, what are some final pieces of advice you have for authors who are interested in guesting on podcasts? Start. It's never too early to start. You don't have to wait until your book is being published or has been published. Start now because it's going to help build your author brand, especially if you want to be published traditionally. You now have a platform to show them this. Look, I've done this marketing already. I'm building an audience. I'm building my brand. And that way, when your book does come out, you already have all of these people who are following you. They've enjoyed hearing you and they will want to buy your book. So allow them that gift of getting to know you and start pitching yourself now. Absolutely fantastic. Well, Michelle, it was a total joy having you on the show. And this brings us to the fun segment called The Plot Twist. So I'm going to give you two genres and I want you to pair them with a season. Your genres are horror and romance. Horror would have to be fall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> Just that's how it, yeah, horror fall. And romance, oh, I'm going to say cr- winter, like Christmas yeah. time. I'm thinking Hallmark movies, mm. although, you know, a good good summer romance wouldn't be bad either. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, super fun having you on this show. Before we go, can you please share with everybody where they can connect with you online and check out all that you do? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. You can you can find my my business website is the mlgcollective.com. My personal website is michelleglogovac.com. I'm on Instagram at Michelle Glogovac. You can buy how to get on podcasts everywhere books are sold. My Simplified Life is on all of the podcast listening platforms, and I'm on all of the social media places, so you can find me anywhere. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. 
Thank you so much, Demi. It was great being here. Yeah, absolutely. And listeners, that is a wrap on this chapter of the show with Michelle on landing podcast interviews as an author. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving the podcast five stars and giving it a review to help others just like you discover it. Also, if you have friends in publishing you think would enjoy the show, please pass it along to them. Thank you for listening. And until we flip to the next chapter, happy reading and writing.